Welcome back. Factoring quadratics continued. If you're in grade 10, you're gonna run into this at some point. If you're gonna be lucky enough, maybe you'll see it in grade nine. Now, factoring quadratics, if you haven't watched the original video, and in that particular video, what I have done was I've set this particular A equal to one. And when we do that, we get a special case of these quadratics. I'll put up a link up above if you want to watch that video, just so that you get a chance to know how to factor the quadratics when this leading A is equal to one. What happens when A is not equal to one is going to be the case that we're going to try to attempt in this situation. One thing that I want you to know is that all the strategies that you use, you know, may not always work they work for special cases that in school you typically run into these cases and you can try some of these techniques now eventually i will do a video which will do the general solution of these quadratics you're gonna have to wait a little bit and try to struggle with these particular special cases when a is not equal to one it is equal to something else i will make the assumption that is going to be still positive, all right? So that A is going to be positive. If it was negative, I can factor out negative one from each term to make it positive if I wanted to. If you take this case, which you see there in kind of pinkish, it has already factored out form of a quadratic. Now I'm going to expand this out and then I'm going to break it down so that we can see what actually happens. I'll try to explain to you how you tackle these quadratics and I'm gonna give several examples and I'm gonna walk you through those examples. I'll struggle with them myself that you can see how to tackle these special cases. All right, if I take this example that is listed here and I'm going to do the distributive property. I'm going to distribute everything across. I'm going to multiply this out and then I'm going to multiply this out. That's going to be the first item that I'll do. I will get 2x squared here. Then I'm going to get minus 6x. Then I'm going to get plus 5x and then finally I'm going to get negative 15. And if I take this whole thing and I collect the middle like terms that I have, I'm going to get this quadratic and notice that this is what it's going to give me. Now, here you notice that you're leading, so your A right here, so this is your A, your B in this case is negative 1, your C is negative 15, that's what you have there. The most important part here is that the A is not equal to one, which removes what we were doing in the previous video that I showed you that you can find a link in the beginning of this video. If you have this and now someone asks you, you have two X squared minus X minus 15, and they ask you, please factor it out, meaning try to get this and return it back to that. Now, how would you do that? You can do the steps in reverse, but it's not always very easy to do it. And you do need some strategies. There is some guessing involved and you can work it if the numbers aren't too big, not too crazy, but guessing is not a fun game to play. If you're doing, for example, a quiz or a test, you wanna be able to have almost like a machine-like structure in terms of steps that you can follow. And then how do I get to that factored form. I'm gonna just show you one technique. There are many different techniques. This is the technique that I used in high school and I was taught in high school at the time. And I'm going to, at the, at the moment when I was taught, I didn't understand it fully. Now I understand it much better. So I'll try to do an explanation for you so that you can see where these things are coming from. Okay, now, Let's break these quadratics down into kind of their general form. What I'm going to do is, so let's forget this whole idea. I'm going to remove this right here. I'm going to leave the actual answer on the right hand side, but I'm going to try to map this out to you to a general form. Now our general form that we will have, 
notice that what we have is we have a coefficient in front of the x. So I'm going to call that coefficient alpha. And I know that you don't always run into these, um, I mean, it's Greek alphabet letters. So this is really just A, okay, and just fancy, fancy way to write it. But I like to keep it kind of separate so we can think of it as a symbol and it's called alpha. So I'm going to say that that number is alpha in front of the x. I'm going to call it alpha 1, okay, so subscript 1, plus the 5 that you see there, I'm going to call, so alpha, let's say 2. Those are just simply two numbers, general numbers, any numbers that you like. Now, we will stick with basically integers, and I'm going to assume that the uh, integers, because if I don't want to get into decimals or if it's fractions, you know, then this thing kind of goes out the door, and I wouldn't recommend it, these techniques for decimals or fractions. Now, the second thing is, all right, so that now our x minus 3 that you see there, the number in front of the x is a 1. I'm going to generalize it and I'm going to call it beta, all right? So this is a b and this is called just beta and I'm going to call it beta and this is going to be x. And then so here plus this is going to be beta 2 and that's going to designate that negative 3 there. Now these are just general. So alpha 1, alpha 2 belongs to that first factor there, beta 1, beta 2 belongs to the second factor, and then they're just general. Imagine that we were trying to distribute this whole thing across. So we're going to do the distribution as it is, except I don't know the numbers here. And if I do that, so I would have multiplied this times that, and I would have multiplied this times that, and so on. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to find a pattern for us to look for so that we can solve when we actually do know what the numbers are, you know, some kind of a technique that will help us to factor these things out. So let's see if there's some pattern here. I'm going to take this. So this is going to be alpha 1 multiplied by beta 1. And this is going to be x squared plus now that alpha 1 is now going to multiply the beta 2 and it's going to be just x. Then finally, we're going to take these. So the next one, the alpha 2, it's going to be alpha 2, beta 1. Here's going to be your x. And then finally, what I have is I have alpha 2 multiplied by beta 2. And that's what I have there. Now, if I highlight this for myself, so notice these um, alpha 1 times beta 1 and then alpha 2 times beta 2. These are like your two numbers. Okay, so these are the, the two numbers that we would have gotten, right, in terms of the multiplication. So these would have been it. Now in this case, it's negative there. That's just the multiplications. Now, in here, so what I have here, so notice I have this right there. That's one of them. And then I have this right here. That's another one of them. And those are just like terms because of the fact that we have an x and then we have an x. So if I really simplify this whole thing, then this, okay, I can take the x out. I'm going to take it in the back there. So, and I'm going to get, this is going to be alpha 1, beta 1, plus alpha 2, beta 1. And I'm sorry there, this should have been right here, this is beta 2, so it's alpha 1, beta 2, that's what I have there. Now, the other terms, so this particular term, I can, okay, simply bring it down, it's exactly the same, and then the same thing happens here, so I can duplicate it and bring it down, and that would have been our simplified form in general. Now, if you are in high school, you know, you're not used to doing this kind of thing. People typically will show you some examples, but you got to just bear with me. I am keeping some students in mind. This may not be for all students, but those who really want to know, you know, how to break these things down and make it simpler for themselves. Now, what I look for is now a pattern. Now, this pattern doesn't stick out for you. And in the beginning, you know, teachers will probably have to point this out to you. Until you do enough math, you know, these things you're going to have to try to see, and it, it is kind of hard. 
So do I see any patterns here? Now, obviously, alpha 1 um, and then beta 1, so that in front term. So, okay, so I'm going to multiply those terms, um, sorry, those two factors, and I'm going to get whatever number that is. The alpha 2 and then the beta 2 at the end, okay, I can multiply those, and I'm going to get the last number. But the problem is in that middle number, right? So in our example, we got negative 1. That's what we had in here. So notice we got a negative 1 out of the whole thing. That's hard to guess, to try to figure that out. And that entire thing basically is coming from this. And notice that I really have four unknowns here. I have alpha 1, I have alpha 2, I have beta 1, and then beta 2. That's four unknowns. That's hard to guess. It's not like it's only two where we can kind of play around and see. Four is a little tougher. But, okay, what I notice here is if you take, for instance, if you're going to take this number and if you multiply it by this number, and if I do that, then what I would have gotten was something like this. I would have had alpha 1, beta 1, alpha 2, beta 2. Because if I multiply them, that means I just have to multiply these factors out and then I'll get some numbers. Now, in our case, if we had 2 multiplied by the negative 15, we would have gotten negative 30. That's what this would have given us, right? So for our example, so right here, so for this example that I started, this would have been really, so this would have been negative, uh, negative 2 times 15, okay? Or simply 2 times 15 and the negative I put in front. That's what we would have gotten and this would have been negative 30. Now, what do we notice here? What we notice is that what we have right here is in this middle term, this alpha 1, beta 1. Notice that here, that is actually something that I can break this down into. I can break this down into its factors. And these factors, so alpha 1, beta 2, and that is coming. So notice alpha 1, beta 2. So that's right here. That's a factor of that. And then what we have is alpha 2 and then beta 1. So that is the second one that I have here. So beta 1, alpha 2. Notice that that's right here. And if I write this out for myself, so this would have been, this is alpha 2, beta 1. The order of them doesn't matter because I'm multiplying. So I can break this down into two of its factors. So it turns out that you can decompose this entire long thing into what we have right there. And you can decompose it into two things. Okay? You can decompose it into two of these particular terms in that factor. These are the terms that we have. So I've taken it out. So that this, this right here can be decomposed into two things. It can be broken down into two things. And now this is where I return back to prime factoring, right? If you break this down into its prime factors, so what do you need to have this broken down into basically, you know, negative 30 in total? Well, the prime factors, let's forget about the negative for the moment. You know, we have 2 and 15. So the prime factors that I have in this entire thing is my prime factors are 2 multiply. The 15 is really just 3 times 5. Those are all the factors that I have that are breaking it down. That's this right here. Now I have alpha 1, beta 1, alpha 2, and beta 2. And if I break it down, now I only have 3 here. Now of course, you know, we, we, can't, we can't have a factor of 1 okay, to make it 4. Your idea will be, and I'm going to do it through some examples, is to be able to break these things down into its factors. And in particular, you want to have this and this to be a factor of the entire thing. So now, which two numbers you know, can I take that are going to be factors of 
30 that's gonna that, that are gonna create 30 for me right so which ones will that be now of course I can cheat here because I know that the answer so if I go back here okay so in order to so this basically has come out to so if the original thing it was that we had negative 6x plus 5x which was equal to negative x and these two so notice these two factors these two are these right here that's these right here so which two okay which two numbers that are factors of these when they multiply each other are going to give me 30 right so out of these now if i do that okay so if i take this let's say i would take you know let's say two and three is going to give me six and then five times one is going to give me five now when you multiply these these obviously give you 30 because you're using those but now keep in mind that what we need is what we need is that when you add them together so when you have a five and you have a six when you're going to add them together they're supposed to give us negative one now why negative one because that negative one is that's what we need when we add them together so well six plus five is clearly not negative one because it's going to be 11 and that's where the sign comes in and you have to think okay so which one is it going to be okay so it's going to be let's make this negative because negative six plus five is equal to negative one and negative six times five gives me this which is the negative 30 and that's what we need now why did we need this because we want to be able to factor things out so what we have okay, if you're going back to this this example so here so from this right here if we're breaking this down that first one so it was 2x squared the last one was negative 15 those ones you're going to keep the same and now you're going to try to decompose that middle term so we know that it's negative x but we want to break it down so that it's two things and those two things that we need there's going to be so negative 6x plus 5x those are where these are coming from right there and then when you add them together of course you get negative x and now because of the fact that you have so in these alphas and betas so if i go back here notice that they share something in common in here so this alpha one and then notice this alpha one they're shared so you can factor it out and i'm going to just show you that right here so let's say this two and this six i'm going to take this and i'm going to say okay what can i factor out here well, what I can factor out here is they clearly have an X in common and they also have a two in common and that's what I needed. So I have two X that I'm going to factor out and what's going to be left behind is going to be X minus three. And now my second one, so this one right here, what is in common? The only thing in common is five. And notice if I take the five out, okay, you get X minus three in here. And here is, so this entire thing, this x minus 3 and x minus 3 is now your factor and as you break this thing down I'm going to put an extra page here then now you can factor this out and it's going to be so this is going to be x minus 3 because I am taking it out from both terms and what is remaining is 2x plus 5 and that is exactly what we started off here with notice 2x plus 5 and x minus 3 so 2x plus 5 and x minus 3 the order of them doesn't matter you can certainly put them in this order so that is irrelevant because it's multiplication now clearly as you watch this it's going to be confusing you have to be able to see numerous examples now, how many people will want to know and see where these, you know, alpha one, beta one, and so on, like, how, what, what does that mean? Most people in high school won't care. They just want to try to get the answers. 
But if you're one of those students who kind of wants to see where these things are coming from, you know, you, I would encourage you to think about it and try to see like, can I understand what he has just done? And I will tell you that it's a small percentage of students that will get it. Um, but that's what the video is for. The video is for those students who actually want to try to take it a little bit notch higher. If you only want to see how to decompose, then take a look at all the examples that I will do right after this. And then those examples are going to show you what to do. And then you can go back and see if you can understand what I have just done. Let's try these. All right. So I'm going to try to break it down and then show you all the different steps again through numerous examples. Here's an example. That's going to be our first one. Let me copy this. All right. And I'm going to break it down and we're going to use the decomposition if necessary. Now, before you even begin and you have a quadratic, I would first suggest, and you're going to see that on some of the examples later, try to see if you can factor anything out. Like, is there a number, right? Is there a prime number or any number, composite number, which is in common to all? Now, here we have our coefficients are 8, 10, 25. And now 8 is really just 2 times 2 times 2. So I can take out a 2, right? Because the 10, the coefficient of 10, I can also take out a 2, but I can't take out a 2 out of the 25. And you will find, okay, so I can't really factor. I can't make this any smaller, right? So now I am stuck. And here, this is really the form of, this is your ax squared plus bx plus c, and your a is 8, your b is negative 10, and then your c is negative 25. And now, once you're, once you're at this step, now you say that, all right, let me decompose this. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be decomposing these. So this is 8x squared. So you leave these terms alone, right? So they're just going to stay there. These are your far off terms. Now, what you want to be able to decompose is this. You want to be able to decompose this negative 10x. And you want to break it down into two numbers. When added together, they're going to give you negative 10. And when multiplied together, Okay, they're going to give you 8 times negative 25. That's what I was explaining before. So just step by step, let's try it. Now that means, okay, so I have this 8, I have negative 25. And what I'm going to do is, all right, so what I know is I need 8 multiplied by negative 25. And now I have to break this down into two numbers. Okay, two factors that will go into this in some way when added together are going to give me negative 10. So what will those two numbers be? Now, this is not easy because 8 times 25 is really 200. So which numbers are we going to use? Okay, so now notice that so this is negative 200. So I need two numbers when multiplied together are going to give me negative 200. But when added together, they're going to give me negative 10. All right. So that's what I'm looking for to try to see. And they have to be factors of these in some way. So now if I take the 8 and the 25, okay, what are all the factors? Well, the factors of 8 are 2, right, times 2 times 2. What are all the factors of the 25? Well, the factors are just 5 times 5. So that's the prime factorization of this. So now I have to be able to match this out in some way to try to see and give me that. Now, the one that stands out to me because it's 200, right, um, is 10 times 20. So 10 times 20 right, would give me 200. Now, 10 times 20, and if I take it out of here, so let's see, so, you know, 10 times 20, so basically it would have been, so this is, let's say, 2 times 5, because that gives me 10, and then 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 5 is 20, so those are going to be my two numbers. Now, if I, if I add them together, now I need negative 10, 
So that means I can make this one negative. And if I add them, indeed, this is going to give me negative 10. When I multiply them, it's going to give me negative 200. So that's what I have. Now, those are the two numbers that I have decomposed. And now I'm going to bring them back in, and they have to be factors, right, in some particular way. So let's see, you know, what is the best way to put it. So is it going to be, so what I'm going to have, it's going to be 10, all right, and then this is x. And here, so this one is going to be minus 20x. Okay, so that's what I'm going to try to do. And now let's map them together. So I'm going to do that. What is in common here? Well, the x is in common. And I mean, the best thing I can do is I guess I can take out a 2. So this is going to leave me, and it's going to leave me 4x plus this is 5. And now, so on the other side, so here, what I have, this is going to be, so now I'm going to take out the negative. Okay, so negative is in common to both. I'm going to take out a 5, because that's in common to both as well. And what's that? That's going to leave me now 4x, because 5 times 4 is 20. And this is going to leave me 5. That's going to be positive 5. And notice these two are the same. That's what I need. This is what I have there. And therefore, okay, if I'm going to factor this out, then this is going to be 4x plus 5. And what's left behind is 2x minus 5. And that is your factored form. Now you can check and go back and see if it actually gives us the original that we started with. Now sometimes what students will have is when they do these questions and they run into this, they'll say, okay, you know, I see that you, you, you have taken 10 and then negative 20, but how do you know that the 10 goes first and the negative 20 goes second? That's just experience and being able to do these. So what I recommend is you can try them, right? Because they have to have factors of both. So you can try, let's imagine that instead we would have taken 8x squared. And we instead, first we would have put negative 20x. And then here we would have put 10x minus 25. If we put this, right, in this order, because it's still the same, now we try to factor things out. So we're gonna to try to factor it out, out of here. What can we factor out of here? Well, we can try to factor, and I wanna just show you what happens. So we're gonna be able to factor four, right? So we wanna be able to take out the biggest one possible. So if we can factor four and we can factor out our x, okay, so that's that. Now what would have been left behind? Well, so here, this would have been 2x, left behind minus five. And now in here in the second one, what could we factor out? All right, so we're gonna be able to factor out, um, I guess, five. So we're gonna be able to factor out five. So plus, all right, so that's what we have there. And what's left is two X minus five. And notice what happens, okay, two X, minus five and two x minus five is there. And therefore, as you're factoring this out, you get two x minus five in both, and then four x plus five, which was exactly our answer right here. And now the order maybe has changed, but it gives you the same thing. So don't be afraid to try them. As soon as you kind of know these two, you can put them in, factor it out, and then make sure. Now we are assuming Okay, that your A, you know, your A was actually always positive. So that 8 is positive. That's what we have there. All right, so that's one example. You got to be able to see a few of these. That's why these videos are a little bit longer than most YouTube videos or videos that you watch. Because I want to go over this as best as I can. And you can put comments below if you don't understand something. And I'll try to follow up. All right, so that's one example that you have seen. Now let's take a look at another example. 
right here. Let me copy this. Let's break it down. So paste it. We have 9x squared plus 88x minus 20. That's what we have there. Again, so the first thing I try, um, I try to see if I can factor something out to make these numbers smaller. Well, 9 is just, uh, I mean, 9 doesn't go into 88, certainly doesn't go into 20. And um, 9 is made up of 3 times 3, so those are your primes. So if I take out a 3, well, 3 does not go into 20. So I can't really factor anything out here, so I'm kind of stuck. So again, so now what do we do? Well, what we do is we write 9x squared, we leave this minus 20. So these two terms always get left behind. And now we decompose this middle term into two numbers. So now again, we take these two numbers, 9, 20. If you multiply them, it's going to be 9 times negative 20, which is minus 180. Uh, whoops, minus 180. That's what we have there. And now we want to decompose this so that we find two numbers when added together, they're going to give us 88. And when multiplied together, they're going to give us 180. That's what we need. And so no, now what are those two numbers? Again, you can prime factorize this whole thing to try to see, right? Um, now, what I can actually see, okay, so because I'm just kind of noticing it's 88. Now, 88 is a very high number. Now, notice 2 times 90, 2 times 90 is going to give you 180. And so I can kind of decompose this. So 2 times 90. Okay, so those two numbers, when multiplied together, are going to give me that. Now, it's going to have to be negative. Right, so one of those numbers is negative. Now, which one is it going to be negative? Well, it's going to be the two is negative because when I'm going to be adding these up together, so if I add these up together, I have to get positive 88. That's what I see there. That's the decomposition of this. So now, once you see that, okay, now you pop it right back in, so negative two. The order again doesn't matter. You don't have to stress out as much about that. So this is going to be plus 90x. This is what I have there. Now we take the first, okay, so we factor this out. Okay, what is in common there? Well, the only thing in common is your x, okay, uh, because 9 and 2 don't have anything in common. 2 is a prime number. And that means that I have 9 remaining, and I have 1x remaining, and this is going to be negative 2. And now what I'm looking for here is, again, so what I want is negative so 9x minus 2, right, because I want that to be in common. And that, which means that what I'm taking out is actually 10. Okay, so notice 10 is going to be the factor that I'm going to take out out of this. And now factoring this whole thing out, 9x minus 2, what is left behind is x plus 10. Okay, and there you have it. So that's what we have. Now, one word of caution, which I said in the beginning of this particular little mini class, this doesn't always work, right? You know, you, you don't always, you, you can't always find these. Um, you know, there's going to be instances where, you know, it's going to be very difficult for you to find two numbers when added together, they give you the middle number, and when then multiplied, they give you that number. Because the numbers are not always super nice, right? In these cases, notice all of these, these, you know, alpha one, alpha two, and then beta one, beta two. So these constants and um, terms within those factors, they're just integers, but they're not always integers. And in those cases, you're gonna need something different right? But it will depend on what you are studying. If they're integers, then you can proceed with this method. All right. So I hope pause this, redo it, okay, and try it on your own. Let's try to see what we have here. Here's another one. I'm going to do this example. It's going to be our third one. Let me copy this down. You can see that example again. So paste. So hopefully now you're, you know, you're seeing a pattern here. So what do I do? Um, first thing is don't get caught because you 
when you're following this, you right away want to be able to decompose the 26. Okay, note that these numbers, I can see that I can take out at least a two, right? I can factor out a two out of this thing pretty easily uh, because two is common to all of them. So I'm going to have two, three, x squared plus this is going to be now 13x plus 14 notice way nicer now 13 is a prime number and which means and 3 is a prime number so i can't factor anything else out but i factor out a 2 which is fantastic because now i have these smaller ones so now what do i do the next step is okay so let me leave 3x squared 14 those ones are staying behind now when you multiply these two so 3 times 14 and that's going to be what 42 you can just check that so 42 and now I need to decompose this into two numbers when multiplied together they give me 42 and when added together they give me 13 hmm well okay so that's gonna be kind of weird right so which two numbers is that gonna be um, so it doesn't come up at me right away I guess is uh, I 42 and notice so I have so I'm breaking down this into factors so 3 now 14 is just 2 times 7 oh, okay so well the two numbers I guess oh that's right 6 because 3 times 2 so 6 times 7 6 times 7 gives me 42 and when added together they give me 13 so this is going to be that 7 um, x plus 14 so that's what I have there all right this is what I carry there and now okay let's break this down and what I'm gonna get is I can take out the 3x from here and that's gonna give me x plus 2 so that's what's gonna be left there and now if I take out the 7 I'm gonna get an x plus 2 as well and what this means is that I have x plus 2, 3x plus 7, and don't forget, you, know, you have a 2 in front. And that's the factor. We have three factors here, and we factor this whole thing out. And that's what you, you would have had in this particular example. All right. So that's another one, and this is how you approach these things by just decomposition. Probably the one of the easier methods to use. Let's take a look at the last one. This one right here, copy. Let's break it down. Um, three, so again, first just try to see if you can factor out anything. Oh, the three factors. Okay, so here, let's take out the three, because three can be factored out of those that's a it's a factor of all of them which means we're gonna have this is 5x and 3 I guess that's 14 that's what we have there and now notice that this is actually the special case where a is equal to 1 and when that happens I mean it's so much simpler now right uh, because all we have is so notice the 1 and the 14, right? So, I mean, we can still use the same thing. So, if within here, so it's going to be, so you have negative 14. So, we have to take two numbers, all right? So, that's going to be negative 14. Now, because this thing is actually 1, um, then I can right away break it down. I can use that video in the, in the beginning, which I told you to watch before, because this is a special case where A is equal to 1. And for that, well, okay, so all we need is, okay, so what are two numbers? When you multiply them together, they're going to give you 14, and then when added together, give you 5. Well, 2 times 7, right? So now it's 2 times 7. Now it is negative, so notice this one's going to be positive, this one's going to be negative, and there you have it. You factored that out. That was using um, the uh, previous okay, knowledge that we have of factoring. I think this gives you a sense, you know, please do try it and try these examples on your own so that you understand it, and then go back in here and try to see if you understood 
what I was doing here with the alpha and then the betas and so on, because that concept is hard.